Nick Majerison here. Welcome to Top Med Talk. And it's time for a conference highlight. This is another highlight taken from the Sir Bruce Keogh address, which was given at EBPOM 2018 at the Institute of Engineering and Technology. Sir Bruce, of course, a giant in the world of healthcare, British surgeon and physician and medical director of the NHS, the National Health Service here in the UK, and national medical director of the NHS Commissioning Board. He stepped down from his role at the beginning of the year and we were delighted to have him speaking at EBPOM 2018. This is the final part of his address and we're putting this out in the hope that you'll listen to the full speech. It's 40 minutes long and it's inspiring, fascinating and insightful. All you need to do is click on topmedtalk.com and you should find a link attached to this podcast that sends you back to the original one that's 40 minutes in length. Anyway, have a listen and see what he thinks about the future of the NHS. Top Bed Talk. And so as the NHS goes into the next decade, we have some specific issues. We have more older people than younger people. That means there are fewer tax receipts and increased demands out of the exchequer. And you've seen the debate that's gone on in the media over the last few days about that. We have a different set of expectations from the kind of baby booners to generation X, Y, and Z who communicate more. And we have this paradox where we have an older generation that we have to provide care close to home, continuity of care, eyeball to eyeball contact, and a younger generation who want immediacy of information. And we will slowly see the transformation of medicine into a kind of knowledge transfer business through different uh, methodologies. So I find myself in the light of all of this asking, uh, what would Bevan do now? Dangerous thing to ask, really. But I think he would come back and he would see that the life expectancy of a man has increased from about 65 years to about 80 years. That meant that at the inception of the NHS, half of the men were dead by the time they reached retiring age. Interestingly, it's the same in Russia now that they've just raised the retirement age. So you didn't have the same cost burden that you have now, particularly dealing with with, uh, older people. He would also see that there should be a big focus on prevention of disease and that that prevention rests with local authorities, metropolitan authorities who deal with housing, education, sport, transport, immunization. And he would see that we have 30% of people in our hospitals don't need to be there, but they're not getting the support out of hospitals to make it easy for people running the hospitals to discharge them with any degree of, satisf- uh, of, of reassurance. And he would look at that and he would say, oh, well, that's social services and that's run largely by the local authorities again. But he would, what he would see would be we've created a construct where we have the NHS over here, we have the local authorities responsible for prevention of disease and keeping people out of hospital, and right in the middle we have a philosophical, a bureaucratic, a financial fracture in what, with care that's free at the point of delivery here and care which is largely means-tested over in the local authority areas. And I think he would see that that is affecting the lives of people who live on a normal spectrum. You know, most people live somewhere on a spectrum of being intensely ill, requiring intensive care, to being perfectly okay. Some people in the middle requiring increasing degrees of support related to age and comorbidities, ranging from help from your family to tablets. And that right in the middle of that, we've got this fracture. So I think he would be heading down the direction of a health and social care system. And I think there's a dawning realisation that the margins between health and care are becoming increasingly blurred, particularly as the population gets older. But we have a problem because the NHS is run from above because the Secretary of State for Health is the executive responsible for the health service, whereas... Local authorities are answerable to, um, to their local electorates. 
And we have 27 county councils, 201 district councils, 32 London boroughs. Um, we have 18,100 councillors. And they have a different view on things to um, the NHS view in a different way of, uh, of doing things. So I think all of that's going to play out. There will be a number of conflicts that have to be resolved. And my guess is it will probably require some form of legislation. Um, the future, in my view, is going to be determined by economics. I've already alluded to the fact no one has money. It's the number one driver of all healthcare systems in the world. The second is that people want more comprehensive and more integrated care. And the things which are going to impact on us, I think, that we need to respond to, this is about the Darwinian adaption, is to mobile technology, artificial intelligence. That's starting to come together. When you have Jeff Bezos saying he's linking up with Warren Buffett, of, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, and they're linking up with J.P. Morgan to bring the same kind of disruption to healthcare, we need to sit up and take notice because that's here now. And then finally, genomics and cell and gene therapy. So those, I think, are the big issues for us. And finally, Mark, if you'll uh, forgive me, can I just say, at a time that people are going to be asking, is our NHS fit for the future? I would say with the advent of genomics, where you can start to predict at a population level who's likely to suffer from what disease, and at an individual level, We work in a healthcare system where the values that drive it say we pool our resources, whatever those are, whatever Parliament gives us, we pool our resources and we offer the best care we can to every member of the population, irrespective of their ability to pay, their need, you know, whatever their backgrounds, whatever. There's something really fair in that. And so I find myself wondering whether now is the time. We should be thinking that with the predictive ability of genomics, we aren't better equipped for the future than many other healthcare systems. And I invite you to ask whether you want to be in an insurance-based system with that kind of medicine on the horizon. Thank you. And don't forget you can meet the Top Med Talk team. All you need to do is turn up at one of our events. Check out ebpom.org for more details. ebpom.org. Our next big event is between the 28th and the 30th of September in Chicago. That's EBPOM USA, the Chicago Master's Course, Perioperative Care Practicum. Between the 28th and the 30th of September, EBPOM.org for more details. That's EBPOM.org.